The only way to achieve what you want to achieve is to see yourself as the kind of person who is at that level, achieving those things. And that's a quote from my latest book, Rat Race Reboot, Chapter 2. We're going to be talking about embodying the person we want to become before the physical results have manifested. You're going to want to stick around. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. So welcome back to another episode. Today we're diving into the transformative essence of embodiment. And that's from chapter two of my book, Rat Race Reboot, and how embodying the person you aspire to become can lead to extraordinary outcomes. So this quote that I started with, it sparks today's conversation and exploration. It's about embodying efficiency, embodying the identity of your future self and aligning your actions accordingly, even on a subconscious, unconscious level. So what does that mean to um, embody efficiency or embody the essence of the person you want to become? It basically means even before your physical, tangible result has manifested, you are acting as if you already are that person you aspire to become. And this isn't just a pretense. It's about aligning your mindset and your actions with your aspirations. So embodying efficiency and embracing the identity of your future self are crucial steps toward your personal and professional growth. Um, And for many, many, many reasons, and I'm going to share a few of those reasons, and then I'm going to give you some actionable steps you can take to help you embody that person you want to become. But if you haven't listened to last week's episode, I talked about getting clarity of who that person is. What are your values? What's important to you? What do you want? You want to do that work first before you dive into this. So go back to last week's episode and listen to that. But there are many reasons why we would want to embody that person we want to become, our future self, before we even manifest our dreams and our goals and our aspirations. And um, one is for self-actualization. By envisioning and embracing the identity of the person you aspire to become, you set a clear standard for your own behavior and your own choices. And this is um, proactive. And this is a proactive approach that propels you toward self-actualization when you're continuously striving to fulfill your potential. Um, Also, it helps you increase efficiency. Now, efficiency isn't about, about being robotic and rigid. It's about maximizing your output or your impact with the resources that are available to you. It's not about hoarding all of your resources and expending more of them. It's about being more effective in less time. And so when you embody efficiency, you make better use of your resources, leading to higher productivity and effectiveness. Goal achievement is another reason we, we'd want to embody the person we want to become in our future, you know, future vision. Um, goals require transformation in our behavior and our mindset and our skills, but mindset is the underlying cause of our behavior. So by becoming the person in our own mind who has achieved these goals first, you align your actions with your objectives and you accelerate the process of goal achievement. Alignment of actions. When you embrace your identity of your future self, your actions naturally align with those long-term goals. This alignment fosters a sense of coherence and purpose, reducing any internal conflict and procrastination. You're making decisions like the person you want to become, right? And I'm going to give you some examples in a bit. Um, It can help you overcome procrastination and fear. 
procrastination and fear comes from a lack of clarity. So having that clarity of the person you want to become, your future self, you can sort of mitigate that fear and tackle that procrastination. And um, as you're gaining more knowledge and you're having a better understanding of the steps you need to take to go toward that goal. Um, so even though those steps might feel uncomfortable, which when you're achieving a goal, when you're becoming somebody that you haven't been in the past, you are going to feel discomfort. That's where the growth happens. Self-belief and confidence. When you are embodying the person you want to become, um, that builds builds upon that self-belief and self-confidence. It reinforces the idea that you're capable of achieve, achieving your aspirations and your goals, which in turn fuels your motivation and your resilience amongst challenges. Oh my gosh, I remember when I first started my coaching business and I started having calls with people, um, I would get dressed up in my power suit in my little, um, my little tiny house in Hawaii my, you know, and I would walk up and down the hallway with my fancy bag and my high heels, even though we wore slippers or <laughs> flip flops all the time in Hawaii, it was very casual, but I would, I would dress up, I would become that person and that helped pump me up and elevate my confidence. And then when I got on the call with somebody, they could feel that energy and it, it just built their confidence as well. And I had much better outcomes, right? So um, another thing that this can help you with embodiment is it helps you make better decisions, right? With a clear vision of who you want to become, decision-making becomes more streamlined. You're able to evaluate choices, not based on where you are today, but on where you want to be in the future. So in, in other words, you're making decisions not like through lack or limitation, like what things you might be experiencing or frustration or challenges, but you're making these decisions based on the person you want to become. And um, that makes the decision making much easier. Long term satisfaction and fulfillment is a part of this because you're in alignment and um, continuous learning and growth. This approach, it just helps us strive to embody the attributes of our future selves. And as we grow, we get to build on that and build on that persona. Uh, and then also, lastly, it helps us have a positive impact. As we grow and evolve, we're better positioned to make a positive impact on other people. And whether that's in our business or in our personal relationships, in our community, within our professional field, um, embodiment really helps us step into that person we want to become much sooner. And as a result of that, all of the benefits and rewards and the um, attainment of our goal becomes a lot quicker. So how do you do that? <laughs> Right. So if you're going through my book, which I highly encourage you to get a copy, you can get it on Amazon through Kindle. You can get a hard copy. It's a, well, a soft copy, a, a soft cover book. Um, you can also go to ratracereboot.com and subscribe on the right hand side of the page. You'll get the first chapter for free. So you can um, dive in while you're waiting for your book to arrive. But I'm going to touch on some of the things that I ask you to do in the book. And so one of the ways that we can embody our future self and who we want to become is the idea of toss, change, keep. So we want to evaluate our habits, taking a current look at our habits. What habits do we have now that would serve our goal moving forward? And what habits might hinder you? What things are we doing in our lives? What Hmm, who in our lives are maybe holding us back? What are some events that I'm engaging in that I no longer need to engage in? What is, what's a part of the old me and what's going to help continue to move me forward? So really looking at what are the things that I'm doing in my life, in my work? You know, if I am an entrepreneur and I am working in my business, but I see myself building an empire, 
some of the things that I might want to toss or change are the things that I'm doing in the business that I might want to empower other people to do. And there's some specific things that you can do that are in the book, Rat Race Reboot, but start evaluating, you know, the empire building Laura Noel wouldn't be doing my own social media, right? So what are some things that you can toss or change? What are some things that are, whoa, this is my core competency. I want to keep that, right? So getting on calls with individuals right now to see if we're a good fit for coaching. I don't want to give that to somebody else. I want to, I want to hang on to that. I want to have deep connections with people that I'm taking on as clients. So evaluate some of these things that you're doing, toss, change, and keep. It doesn't mean that you're taking action right now. This We're taking baby steps, but at least write it down. All right. And then in the next chapter, we'll start taking action toward actually giving some of these things out and sharing the wealth. Um, mindset adjustments. Are your current mindsets in sync with the person you want to become? And this is where toss, change, or keep methods come pivotal. Um, what decisions would your future self make, right? Um, that was another example I, I made. So does the decisions that you're making now, if they're not serving your future self, toss them. Start making decisions like your future self. Um, there was another example. I, I was um, talking with a gentleman who was working on his fitness. And when he would go out to eat, he just would ask the question, how would an athlete fuel their body? And where he might get fried food or, or a um, an alcohol beverage, <laughs> that helped him really make a decision that was in alignment with his future self. That simple question, how would an athlete fuel their body? How would a, um, a leader who's a mentor and um, who cultivates leaders around them, how would they grow and develop this team or this person. It starts to drive your actions when you ask questions like that. And then you start to evaluate, huh? Well, in light of that, what could I toss a change or keep? Another thing that you can do to embody the person you want to become is address those drains on your time so that you can have time to connect with this vision of yourself. Um, Another thing that you can do to embody the person you want to become is as you're making strides toward your goal and you're stepping into this person, um, being aware of one of the pitfalls that I call the goal hangover. So when you're making strides toward your goal and embodying that person you want to become and actually seeing things manifest, um, it's easy to allow your old paradigms to pull you back to safety, to the old version of, of yourself. And one of the pitfalls is uh, through a goal hangover where we achieve a goal and we're like, wow, that's amazing. I'm, I'm becoming the person I want to become. I see it happening around me. I'm going to chill out a little bit. Don't do that. Stay motivated by setting new goals and embracing the journey, not just the destination. So this process isn't about the goal in and of itself. It's about who you get to become along the way. That's the magic of it. Um, another thing is addressing procrastination. Procrastination often disguises fears. And so recognizing that fear, addressing it, and taking action no matter what, even if it's just one step, every step forward is a step out of the procrastination pit, right? And that's what you want to keep in mind um, as you are embodying this person you want to become. So last week I gave you examples, some personal client examples of Summer, Emma, and Rob and how they embodied the person they wanted to become. And they were able to do that because they got clarity on who that person is. And then they started making decisions like that person. Is that easy? No, it's not. It's stinking scary because in your rational brain is telling you, I'm not that person yet. How can I make decisions like that person? But if you keep making decisions like the person you are today, getting the same results you're getting today, you're going to keep creating the same results. And I teach you how to do that in Rat Race Reboot and also as coaching clients. If that is something that you're interested in, I encourage you to get in touch with me 
Um, the address will be in the show notes. Let's get on a call and see if coaching might be a good fit for you because I can help you compress time and help you navigate through those fears and those challenges, right? So as individuals experience these kind of things, so do organizations. They all experience it. You know, this is the same process um, an individual would take as a team would take collectively. So strategies for being efficient, strategies for being the person you want to become is one, reflect. Evaluate your current, rep uh, your current priorities. Are they in line with the person you want to become? So action step is reflect, reflect, evaluate your current priorities, the things that you're doing, your habits, are they in line with the person you want to become? And what would you like to see changed? What kind of habits would the person you'd like to become adopt? And if you're looking for inspiration, look to people who are already achieving, living the way you'd want to be living, doing the things that you would want to be doing and imagine what habits they have, or better yet, ask them, right? Believe, cultivate the belief that you are the person capable of achieving those goals. So you establish a belief that you are that person through time-spaced repetition of a new idea. So we're the person we are today because of the beliefs that we've been born with and developed over the years, our paradigms. So if, if we want to become somebody different and we want to become a better version of ourselves, it makes sense that we would want to let go of some of those old beliefs that aren't serving us anymore but then adopt some new ones that are in harmony with the person we want to become. And this is where some affirmations would come into play, having vision boards and reminders all around you, but that's not enough. You want to get emotionally involved with those affirmations and those reminders, you know, stick it notes and, you know, vision boards, right? And we want to continually be living in that space as the person we want to become. And here's where the next thing will help you do that is act. So write down 50 things that you would do as the person, as your future self. Once you arrive there, what are 50 things you'd be doing? What are 50 things you'd be experiencing? How would you be living your life? What kind of things would you be doing with your friends or for yourself or with your family or in your household? Um, what kind of car would you be driving? How would you dress? How would you carry yourself? Um, how would it feel being you? And I bet you, you could circle at least 40 of those things that you could start doing to some extent right now. So for example, if you have your dream car that you're thinking of, but it's not feasible right now for you to purchase that car, you can go for a test drive and experience what that feels like. Like feeling is the conscious awareness of the energy you're in, the vibration you're in. And so that goal or vision for yourself is an energy, it's a vibration. And so by you creating feelings, getting in alignment with the feeling of you being that person, anything that you can do to help you will draw those ideas, those inspirations, those solutions to you much faster. If you have your dream home, the idea of your dream home in your mind and what it would look like and the kind of decor that you would have, well, maybe there's a piece of pottery that represents that home to you and you could have it where you see it every day. That's how you start to embody that person. If you want to be a confident leader, at a meeting and you want to step in in your confidence and speak to your team at a higher level, create that vision in your mind of how that person would walk, talk, act, and prepare for that moment and step into that moment as that person. You're in essence method acting. Bob Proctor always talked about that um, method acting way of being. Uh, I would I'll, I'll put another uh, book in the notes. I also uh, note it in Rat Race Reboot, but it's The Art of Acting by Stella Adner. Um, that's a book that you might want to pick up and read. But these are all things that you can do to embody the person, your future self, right now. It's about 
be, do, have. When I beat, when I become this person and start doing the things that that person would do, I'll have the things that that person has, as opposed to have, do, be. Where once I have these things that I want, then I'll start doing those things that that person would uh, do. Then I'll become that person. We want to flip that idea on its head. So it's be, do, have. Be the change you want to see. Start doing those things you would do if you were that person now, and then you will have those things. Remember that. I have that on my uh, license plate on my car. My car. So. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, that's a wrap up of today's episode. It's about embodiment is about aligning your actions with your aspirations and your dreams. So reflect, believe, act, and evaluate. And until next time, keep striving for a life of purpose and fulfillment. You got this. And remember, everything is created twice, first in your imagination and then in physical form. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.